welcome to Life Happens with Bahati Joyce. This week we have an art explosion. It's an art attack. <laughs> so we're here with Gano the artist and he's going to be sharing us with us his journey on art and activism. Gano the artist is an activist who seeks new horizons on engaging his art skills for sharing and showcasing. He participated in various art courses, workshops and residences within and without Tanzania. His latest art event is Wasemaje, an art exhibition organized by the embassies of Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Finland in October 2020. Art in his age was not well appreciated. Now he's hard to work hard to achieve his goals and prove its worthiness. So this is Life Happens with Bahati Joyce. You're with me, your host Bahati Joyce. Gano, you are very welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. It's good to have you. Thank you so how much. You, how are you feeling today? I uh, feel well count and uh, feel very okay. That's awesome. I'm so happy to be here. Nice. Just viewers they can hear what I have to say and then it's wonderful. Nice. An art attack. Yes, an art <laughs> attack. <laughs> we are being attacked by art in a very good way. So maybe let's start with just the general before we get into some of your wonderful paintings. Tell the viewers who you are and what it is that you do. Yeah, um, my name is, uh, it's got a very long name. It's uh, Lembolisi, Gwalugano, Ayubu, Mokatobe, but call me Gano. Check. Yeah, I'm an artist and I do a variety of art, uh, illustration, paintings, contemporary. Wow. Uh, I do a little bit of music and also I'm an activist. Wow. That's why I call myself activist. In. Artivism. Yes. It's art and activism. And activist. We're going to get more into that. Um, let's start with your journey. It, specifically, you mentioned different types of arts that you do. What is the difference? You know, when people think about art, uh, we just see painting and mm. colors. Help us understand more about art. Yeah, art is undefined. Nobody have already defined art or we don't have a competent definition of art. Okay. But art is something which is inside of you mm -hmm. as an artist. You want the viewers or the recipient to re receive your ideas. So the way you put it, how you can appeal for them to understand and to, to receive. That's how it's not. So uh, you can do uh, drawings, can make uh, sculptures, can do paintings, some illustrations. Uh, illustrations in Swahili we call Vialelezo, mm. uh, those are images in the books. Right. And uh, the caricatures, those are artists. Okay. And uh, performing arts like uh, uh, those comedians, uh, drama, soap operas, all right. those are kind of an artist. The film is kind of art. So it's more of like expression of exactly. what is inside, bringing it out so that people can see. Exactly. Wow. That's a, there's some people who, you know, but we get about into art. You know, people say this is art, and you look at it, and you're like, surely there are two wires connecting on a pole. How is this art? Installation. 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 What does that mean? Um, for computer users, they used to call installation. Yeah, you put something inside the computer, the application that works, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of using the found materials mm -hmm. just to create. Uh, phenomena like or a message you want to send to portray and you arrange in the order you want it to be that's called installation so it can be um, arrangements or recycling mm. uh, putting some stones like stone hanging in, in, in UK okay I think in stone mm. hanging, that is installation or um, for instance a dentist uh, he wanted to uh, decorate it's office, I mean, it's dental. So uh, someone can come with the idea of putting some stones, right. depicting like a teeth, or make some sort of arrangement, which it's appealing for people to get a message what the dentist wants people to see. You've said something very key there, message. Yes. So they, for it to be art, there has to be a message, or what are you saying? Every piece of art, or any art, have the story. Behind. Okay. Yeah, so that's the message. Okay. And you can have a message you want to portray, but people, they can receive a different message from it. So um, that's what we call contemporary art. 
Oh, yes. Okay. And also, there are artists who can draw the same as you are. Yes. Portrait, portrait. Or drawing, portrait or life drawing. Okay. Um, it's kind of art. Even can send a message because you have a, a gesture. Uh, you see a gesture or some sort of uh, combination of uh, creation of objects and hidden messages inside there. So you can have kind of art like that as okay. well. So and what exactly is contemporary art? Contemporary art, it's an art which is modern. Okay. And uh, it's a fusion. You can do anything, you can draw anything, you can portray or you can try to um, put your ideas in a way you want them to be. Right. Um, it's not a realistic or realism mm -hmm. because it's quite a very long story, but uh, the paintings which have the how can I I can I can define like um, impression mm -hmm. yeah so you have arrangement of colors mm. maybe the message is hidden in colors or the message is within the uh, I mean the figures objects and it's just like cubism or abstract it's a modern art right yeah okay and just as we're, we're talking more general about art what are the different kinds of art that they are or how if i'm just starting to paint and getting into art how do i define where i fall into those different categories um so it's a uh, you know in tanzania we don't have uh, competent schools where we can our people or we learn art through most of us we are self-taught wow. yeah so we use now we have uh, internet so it's a, a really helpful for us to learn because art is how you do it and compare others. How are they doing the art? So you know uh, which stage and level you are. But this is painting, this is how you want to put your art in. For instance, I can do a figuratives, figure drawings, and that single object without a background or whatever. So that is a figure drawing, right? And uh, it's a realistic because you can see even the texture of the texture of the skins and uh, you can see even the gestures the wrinkles everything go perfect say like a camera okay that's life drawing realism mm -hmm. and uh, come to the contemporary um, I can define much like abstract right it's not necessarily realism yes okay. and uh, this you can see the further the father of abstract Picasso Oh. But he was uh, inspired with African art. What? Yeah, he was inspired what? with African art. Say that again. Picasso, the father yes. of, of abstract art, was inspired by African art. Exactly. Explain because, that to me. Uh, he was a realistic artist. Okay. And uh, he was the scholar of uh, re Renaissance artists, uh -huh. like Michelangelo, Da Vinci, all those lines. And he was doing the perfect art. I remember uh, there was a story. He drew a coin on the on the on the on the, on the floor, and someone tried to pick it up. So it was a really rea realistic, realistic artist. Yeah. But when he started to see, when the explorers started to come to Africa, right, and then take some uh, archives from Africa right. to, to to Europe, so he saw some uh, sculptures. Vinyago oh, from Timbuktu and right, so and so. Right. So where he get this idea of uh, cubism and uh, uh, this, I can say, abstract art. Wow. So that's how he get an idea. So he was inspired with African art, Africa covers. So he put them into the painting. So he, he started to distort his realistic. Right. Yeah. So that's we can see. Uh, the background of the image from the front, that's what you can yes, define yes. Uh, abstract, yes. so how it, how it does. It's not exactly reality, but he, exactly. he took that African artifacts yes. and distorted them, but on a painting. Exactly. Very amazing. We're going to go on a quick break. I want to touch more on that African art and art in Tanzania when we come back. This is Life Happens with Bahati Joyce. We are getting inspired by art this week, so stay tuned with us.
Welcome back to Life Happens with Bahati Joyce. I am calling this episode an art attack. We're here with Ghana, the artist, and he's in inspiring us with a lot of knowledge about art. So, Gano, let's let's go back to the history of art specifically in Africa because you touched on something so profound to me that actually there's a connection between Africa and Picasso. So now within our continent and then within our nation, what is really the history of African art? Yeah, I can start uh, from uh, something like outside of art. You know Tendaguru, it is in Lindi. Tendaguru is okay. a place in Irindi okay. where um, these fossils, remains of uh, dinosaur ever happened, ever lived. They are found, they are in German now, in a uh, art museum. So um, from that line to Odvai Goch, mm -hmm. there is a lot of fossils. In yes, there. that is true, yeah. yes. And then those are I mean, uh, stone uh, tools, which were used in the Stone Age, those are the kind of art because mm -hmm. they cannot a curve without having knowledge of what they want to do. Right. Those are the scissors, I mean the needles, uh, razors, and those weapons, just knives and so and so and so. Um, in a Kondo Irangi, where uh, there are um, rocks paintings, those are the ever, ever, the first ever uh, drawings by the human being. What? In the world. And where is this? Uh, those are the rock yes. paint. Yeah, is this in, 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 Tanzania, in Tanzania, yes. In this Tanzania. is what I wanted to emphasize. Yes. In, in so you're telling me the oldest paintings in the world are in Tanzania? Yes, yes. This is a place where someone can go in and see them? Even you can go and you can see it. Yeah. I have never known that. So, so Tanzania has the history of art. Yes, The of oldest course. paintings known and recorded are exactly. here in Tanzania. Exactly. Okay. You know, the pottery, we have a pottery, we have a clay works of Tanzanian tribes. Mm. There are good art in it, and uh, there's a lot of messages hidden, hidden in, uh, in those pottery and the clay works. Mm -hmm. And it had been passing through the generation after generation. And we went through the uh, darkest time because there was no art material. Even the art material found uh, the, for the international schools like ST and so and so, and right. big family, fast family, I mean the advanced families. Right. And it was very expensive to find out because you're not given them uh, money to purchase any material because the family was not supporting you to do mm. art. Mm. Yeah, we that's are, very important. We are encouraged point. to study hard. Right. Okay. So then um, we use uh, flowers, you know, this kind of flowers and uh, leaves, you know, to create colors. Wow. The kittens, dogs, cows, they're in trouble because we took so those feathers to create oh. brushes. Wow. <laughs> 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 you see, if you had a chicken, those, that was a paintbrush. Exactly. So you take the feather and then put it in a way like a brush you wow. see today. Wow. So we know the brush for use for oil colors, yeah. for whatever. Even this soil can make the soil can make a good color. So we use wow. this, all this material. No sketchbooks. There was this trigger cement, I remember? Yes. And then they have these cement bags with, uh, it was a, it was a paper bags. Right. So then it, uh, we took the layers yeah. inside and then we fold them to have a sketchbook. Wow. Charcoal. Wow. The kitchen char charcoal. Yes. We carve it to become a pencil. A pencil. Yeah. So you used natural materials. Natural materials. Because you, like you were saying, you, you didn't have the privilege of having the materials and resources for art that maybe other privileged children did have. Yeah. yeah. And is that, do you feel like that's been kind of like where the history of African art has come from. Do you find that a lot of African art maybe is based on these natural materials because of that or? Exactly, because even uh, those cave paintings or rock paintings, right. uh, they didn't have a paint like we have. No, this uh, oil paints or acrylics. Right. They are using like, uh, uh, Gra I mean leaves, leaves, uh -huh. right to color. Yeah, the fluid from the leaves. Or oh, they use these coconut things. Just it have cannot be taken off. Can be right, washed right, off. Right. Yeah. So they use natural materials. Natural materials. One thing you touched that I, I want to go back to is Tinga Tinga art, and I'm glad yeah. you went there because there's such a rich history between Tanzania and Tinga Tinga art. As we know, Tinga Tinga art started and originated in Tanzania. Could you tell me about that? Yeah, Tinga Tinga art is originated by uh, this uh, Miss Tinga Tinga, who's the initiator of this. And uh, he was doing uh, this very decorative art. 
a way of putting, applying colors, drawing even the figuratives. They are quite different from the, you know, the normal. And uh, what I remember is he was being inspired by someone who was doing art in uh, Nairobi, I remember. Okay. But he did something very different. Of course, he died tragically, but he left the generation. A legacy. Yeah. Though they started to take it off from where he, he left. Okay. So the Tinga Tinga art is, is a style. It's a style of making art. Mm. It's originating in Tanzania. And I, I, w I would wonder how much they're making from it because I, you still see the state of the artists maybe isn't um, where it should be. And, and it's a very important point that you bring up because I heard, I heard that it was patented um, or copyrighted, was it in Sweden, somewhere in Europe, Tinga Tinga Art. And yeah. because of this story, um, you know, with the guy who started it and they took him outside and mm. then patented um, Tinga Tinga there. How has it affected you know, as, as as Tanzanians, as artists, how does do those kind of things affect us, and how can we help and protect our art? Yeah, in my art journey, I happen to be the board member of Copyright Society of Tanzania, Kosota. Okay. So this is, Tinga Tinga is tend to be a folklore, and it has to be patented in Tanzania. Wow, okay. We have Lilanga, we have mm. Msagula, Mzuguna, right. and uh, those are in the older generation they have this 10 uh, shillings note there was uh, kinyago they called shetani mm. so that originated here but you can find it's not patent wow you see so we have a lot of things that you can uh, use uh, to generate life of artists right. even to uh, increase the occupato uh, right. of the uh, country you see but also the younger generation will learn and uh, adapt this kind of creativeness that they can develop because you cannot develop something which is not there. Right. And, and you said something very important. We need to protect our art. Yes. And um, I, I'm glad that you've touched on copyright and then just locally finding a way to support our artists and protecting their work. So for some of the artists who are watching and maybe they're asking, well, how do I go about that? I'm an artist. I have work I want to sell, maybe internationally. How do I, one, protect myself? But two, how do I make money from my art? Yeah, and um, according to the law, uh, Copyright Act, it is directed or regulate that uh, you need to register your art within Kosota. Okay. So they give the pattern, the number, and then it's preserved. The reuse of that work. Okay. For instance, you saw your work that Kosota is not in, I mean, the copyright mm -hmm. does not intervene yeah. with your, uh, you know, negotiations. So I sell my art to you, that's no problem, take it. Go and hang it at home, no problem. Get hang in your office, no problem. You create the postcard, you put in the book, you've created maybe you print the t-shirts or promotion materials, or put in the billboards and whatever. That's the reuse of art. Right. So it is protected. So okay. artists have to benefit from it. Right. See? So that's the law how it says. But here it's quite very hard because most artists they're not uh, registering their art. Even maybe nowadays Kosota is not prom promoting itself very well for the artists. So it just like when you have a problem, you run too. But those days, when we were, I was in the board, because I was representing my sector, my visual artist right. into the board. Mm -hmm. It was vibrant, and we did a lot of awareness. So artists, they knew it. Even Kosota was work. collecting uh, royalties, right. uh, licensing the users of art, right. and distributing those royalties to the artists. Mm. Now, you say that you are an Artivist. What is an artivist? What is artivism? Yeah, in uh, most of my art, I love to send messages which is touching the society. The issue like gender, I love to uh, to present. Right. I mean, uh -huh, gender issue, reproduction, uh, health, uh, issue of uh, freedom of expression, right. and uh, issue of education. Those are the things I love to generation or the people or enthusiasts to see from my art. Not just like, like having a traditional uh, houses and so and so, because those things we draw every day. You know, the artist is the, is the one who um, you can say he's educated, 
and uh, giving the notices to the uh, community. Mm. Even it's giving the, um, you know, the psychological healing, like, because yeah, art is a therapy for people who are in stress also. How are you using art to communicate these messages effectively? Is it effective? Do people receive the message? What happens thereafter? Yes, um, there is a lot of methods, methods we use. For instance, I have been in a different campaigns. I use my art as a campaigning tool. And uh, I remember it was like a change in behavior somewhere in the regions, up country. And uh, it was people uh, telling people to change behavior in the high chains, the, in a family level, throwing water, using toilets, and so on. So, so we, I'm an artist, I participated by using my drawings, and it was easy to articulate with the community, and they really understood. So the impact was big. And also, there is this uh, comic. Uh, I do comic also. Uh, we heard, uh, I heard some sort of like uh, comic campaign. Everybody can draw. I can make you to draw, to make an art within wow. a day. Really? Exactly. Can you can create a story? Where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> you have to show me. <laughs> yeah, we heard uh, with the TNGP, I remember, uh, as a pilot. And uh, this, we enable the community mm -hmm. to tell the stories. Wow. Of their issues. Wow. Attaining. Through art. Through art. So we give the paper. From morning up to evening, we train them how to draw. Even they can draw stick figures wherever. Mm. And how to make uh, bubbles and so and so. So after that, they create a story. So the stories, they are helping even the policymakers to see the com how communities see things in their eyes. Wow. Not like in a, a political campaigns right. and so and so. So I came to find it's quite very useful because campaigning art, uh, art is education also. Yes, you yes. can educate community through art. And I love to portray the issues because these issues are here. For instance, we are talking about now we, there is a global pandemic. Okay, So we need to create art telling the community, telling the society what is really happening and what are the ways. Right. So even art lives hundred years so in coming years they come to learn there was uh, these issues right this happened it kind of leaves exactly. a historical mark exactly it's so important that we talk about this aspect of storytelling because this is what this platform is about using stories to be able to connect and send a message or change the narrative how has art changed or how can art change the narrative of Africa through storytelling in Africa we have a lot of creations mm -hmm. They are in the dark. Okay. Yeah, and uh, through art we can pursue because these things are there and it has been uh, adapted from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. You see? So That's this true. kind, it needs an art to make them like a document right. or, and to portray the message. Right. Even the community or society, they can see what have been through because now it's just like. We are stagnant. We are just like every day we are starting over. Right. Okay. But people have been there. Yeah. There There's history. Reason. There's history. And what you're saying is that art can be uh, some form of a communication tool, yeah. which it was in the past. If you remember before, before we had English, before we had Kiswahili, before we had all these languages, they communicated through art. Exactly. They would paint. The yeah. cavemen would paint in the caves. Yeah. Another group would come and find and realize this is the history and this is what happened in this place and they'll sure. read the story sure. that's very powerful we're going to go on a very quick break again and when we come back i want to talk now more about your personal paintings and and artwork i don't even know if this is a painting or a drawing but you're going to tell us this is life happens with bahati joyce this is where we take life out and make it happen we take life head on and make it happen bringing you the best of africa stay tuned with us Welcome back to Life Happens with Bahati Joyce. We are with Ghana, the artist who is an activist and he uses his art to send powerful messages to the society. So Ghana, I want us now to talk about one or two of your paintings. Um, tell us about the painting, the technical aspect, but also the message behind it um, so that we can kind of understand your artivism. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there is this one uh, last year, I traveled somewhere. I, went to, I was in Bagamoyo and uh, to my friends. 
uh, home I visited him and then we had a very good conversation uh, I spent a night there but I had a very very strong dream mm. it was a very long dream and I until now I remember that dream so when I woke up I talked to my friends I dreamt about this I say yo amazing and I put it into art wow <clears throat> so I draw it I use ink and the pencil colors and it's very nice for me it's nice I don't right. know the viewers can see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yeah. I mean you turned your dream into a reality a, literally <laughs> most this art uh, it is poetic art. Okay. Yeah. Poetic. The, the style I use is poetic mm. art. Poetic because you can have a lot of messages hidden. Oh. Even I cannot see them. Right. I do not intend, but you can see it and you can say, okay, you can reveal. This is something. So, wow, now I see. The art is speaking. Yeah, art speaks itself and from late itself. Yeah. So, that's kind of art. And also, um, there is um, this kind of art I use pastels. I love pastels mm. and uh, in the pastels you cannot draw much details okay. but I'm trying to to do some details in it the detail is the message so so your messages that you send out are they are they open for interpretation or do you explain these messages to people and kind of campaign opening dialogue opening dialogue <laughs> I like it that's what art is about really interpretation yes interpretation people it's can people, interpret yeah but also every as I say in the beginning mm -hmm. every art mm -hmm. have the story right in it behind it so my story I can tell you but you can have your own story right from my story or different story I call it the I mean enthusiastic uh, art to you so what is the African story you want to tell through your art uh, the African story I want to tell is we were civilized before. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's powerful. <laughs> yes. W the story you want to tell with your art is that Africa... We were civilized before. We were civilized before. Explain that. Um, this is very complicated. You know, uh, I am a Nyakusa. My, my dad is Nyakusa. And uh, God in Nyakusa is called Kiala. And uh, my mother is Masai. So Ngai is a uh, name of God mm -hmm. in Maasai. Mm -hmm. So I was, ask, I was asking, where do these names came from? Mm. Before, I mean, the Christianity and the Muslim, Islamic came to our parts. Mm -hmm. So it's, we, were, we were having a worshiping God. The God was there with us. Mm -hmm. So if God was there, then the creative mind, the creation of God was still in progress. That's why we had a lot of uh, archives like uh, stone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. art, stone paintings, mm -hmm. curves, you know, and those all kind of mm -hmm. stories of the heroes. Right. And then uh, we have uh, messages right. about the medicines and so yes, and so. Yes, so. it's very true. So about it, the civilization that exactly. was there. Yeah. So we are there. Yeah. So even the white camps, it was a war. Mm. People were not fighting by hands. Mm. They had the weapons. How do they make, how do they think about having a weapon to fight another nation mm. or to fight invaders? So all the tactics used by me, even Mkwawa, was a civilized one. So when it comes to African art, one, how can we support our young African artists maybe to make a living from this art? And where do you see art heading in the continent of Africa? Um, that's a very good question and uh, that's, uh, it's a needful. And, you know, to support young Af African artists, we need to encourage them. We need to give them opportunity. We need to give them chance uh, to pursue their goals. Um, the issue of curriculum, uh, the art have to be taught in a school from the elementary up to the university because nowadays, for instance, University of Dar es Salaam, uh, I found some artists who are new to the sector and then they get to university. So they have been taking other subjects before and get to the university. So if we miss the link. So we have to connect this link to make sure we have a foundation of art. We need to have art museums. Mm. Uh, we need to have art complex. Right. Yeah, art galleries. Right. Yeah. So the charities and the supports have to be uh, focused to develop an enhancement of art rather than to develop individual artists. To just give them the piece of uh, bread. You see. So we have been uh, supported, but not the way it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah, so to educate, that's the issue. Very important. Like Sudan, 
and uh, Egypt, South Africa, they've been doing a lot, uh, and other countries, they've been doing a lot as an Africa countries to develop art. But we need to incorporate, right. yeah, to adapt the things. So we can develop our art. How to make art useful? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I've been working in Nyumba Sana, which of course, previous Nyumba Sana, as a marketing. When I was a very young, young guy, uh, small boy. So we had a motto that trade, not aid. Mm, so I have, like that. Yeah. So you have to buy my art that I can earn a living. Mm. Yeah. Rather than to give me money and I can resent and then sit back and say, okay, I have money, I have this thing, right. I can buy materials. Trade, when, not aid. Trade, not aid. That's so what we want. People who are supporting art, they need to buy art from artists. Mm. They need to develop art. Right. Artists, we can now need uh, those art developers a lot. Yeah. Curators. Uh, art administrators, right. art managers, you know, directors, and so and so and so. Those people they can speak for art. Mm -hmm. Artists themselves, I cannot uh, take my time much, uh, make a lot of advocacy or campaigning on art. I need to do my art as well. Mm -hmm. So I need someone who can send a message. Right. Do you need people who can communicate exactly. and send that message? Exactly. But what you're saying is that we can actually make money from our art as a nation. A lot. Where you send this art outside and, and the tax, is it comes back to the home country. Yes. And therefore makes money for the government. Exactly. Amazing. Exactly. So this can even create a lot of jobs. Right. I'm telling you one secret about uh, Europe. Um, you know, Venice, uh, talking about Vatican. Yeah. That St. Peter Church and all Sistine Chapel and all those, I mean, even in Rome, mm -hmm. Italy, those is the work of art. Those mm -hmm. architects' buildings, it's a work of art. Artists, they did a lot of creations, uh, creativity, worked together with engineers to create those monuments and houses and buildings. It's very nice. But here in Africa, artists just we are in a, in a block. Right. Yeah. They're kind we of in, to, in kind the dark. Of, they need yeah. to come out. <clears throat> yeah. So we need to come out, incorporate it, collaborate. Collaboration. Yes. Yes. Key word. Yeah. So these things need to, you know, work together. Right. So artists, they cannot do themselves. Even the country or community cannot do it themselves. So we need to collaborate to develop. For the young artists, my friends, viewers, young people in Africa, uh, do what you believe and uh, can create you can do a lot of mistakes don't be afraid or being distrained so from the way you want to pursue but the thing is what's the impact you want to uh, show or to give to the community be remember you belong to the society as a society belongs to you amazing amazing thank you so much Ghana the artist the activist from Tanzania who is telling Africa's story through art and is changing um, the community addressing social issues through art it's been an amazing time here on life happens with Bahati Joyce we have been immersed in the world of art and just how significant a role art has to play in changing the African narrative. I've been so inspired and I've learned a lot actually about our own history, many things that I didn't know about art and how it connects to our history, but also about the potential of, of what art can do, bringing funds back into the country, but also changing the, the narrative of, of Africa, telling the story through art. This is why this platform is here, so that we can tell stories and connect and learn. So stay tuned with us. This is Life Happens with Bahati Joyce. It is exciting and different every single time because what we do here is we bring you the best of Africa. <laughs>